So, as I said before, our Pascal's triangle is limited by the fact that we have to draw all of that. So it gets really quite annoying when you go beyond anything more than five or six lines. That's why it's more of an introduction to the binomial theorem. So we're kind of using it as a bridge to the binomial theorem. So what I want to do here is overcome that limitation. And how we do that is by having Pascal's triangles but using combinations to work out the numbers within the triangle rather than writing them all out. So let's learn how we're going to use combination to find these numbers. So we know that Pascal's triangle starts off with 1, 1, and we can actually use combinations to work out these numbers. So 1 and 1 can be worked out by having 1, C, 0 and 1, C, 1. So let's just practice putting that into your calculators. So you just need to press one and you'll have a little C button. So shift that and zero. And do you get one? Good, great. Now let's practice with this one. So put in one C one in your calculator and you get one as well, don't you? Exactly, so you can see how we use this combination to get one and one. But how do we know what combination to put in? So this is what I'm gonna try and show you. There's a pattern to that. For one and one, you know that this is the numbers that's used as the coefficients for the index of one. So that's how we start off with the number one there. And here, we always start off with zero. So it's actually quite simple. So this is what the index of this is used for. And that, we always start with zero, okay? Now let's see how it works for the next line, which is one, two, one. So we can use the combinations again to get these numbers. So how we know what combination to use, remember how I said, well, this one was used for the index of one, and this is used for the coefficients for when we're expanding for the index of two, right? So that's how we know we're gonna start off with two up here. And remember, this always starts off with zero. And the next one is just going to be 2c. And this, you just plus one, so it becomes one. Finally, that becomes 2c2 there. And the last one here, these two numbers should always be the same. So we can have a quick check, does this give us those numbers? So let's just check this one, okay? So put that in your calculator. So remember two, and then c and zero, and you should get one. What about this one? two and then c and one good it gives you two right so you can see this is how we can use combination to work out these numbers all right let's have a bit more practice with the next line so here we have one three three one and to get these numbers we're going to use this formula for combinations so this is used for the index of three so we're going to start off with good three c zero and this will be 3C1, 2, 3C3. And if you put this number in your calculator, you're gonna get one. And if you put this, you get three. And this gives you that three, and this gives you one. So this, these combinations is gonna give you these four numbers, essentially, all right? Okay, and you can kind of see that although this is the first term, it's always starting off with zero there. So just remember that we're starting with zero, even though we call it technically the first term. Let's try and use combination to get the same numbers as we would by just writing out the Pascal's triangle for that. So we know that because this is used for the index of four, right? That means we're gonna start off with four C zero as our first term. And then four C one will be our second term. Add another one. C2 become our third term, 4C3 our fourth term, and finally 4C4 as our fifth term. So this is how we use combination to work out these numbers without writing it all out. Why this becomes useful is if you have power of 20, for example, it's gonna take you a really long time to go down and write it all out, but it's gonna be a lot easier to know that the first term for that is always gonna be 20C0, right? And the next one's gonna be 20C1, the next one 20C2, 
so on until 20C20. So can you see how this is how I use combinations? So that's the first point I wanna make, is how to use combinations instead of drawing out all the numbers. The second point I think that's really important to make here is that what I said before is although we're starting off with zero here, this is called our first term. So just be really careful. Our first term is when we have 4C0, all right? Not 4C1, so always starting off with zero. So in that way, our second term is actually 4C1. So can you see how that happens just to be one less than the term? And our third term is 4C2. So once again, that's one less than the term, isn't it? And fourth term, you have three here. And finally, the fifth term, you have four here. So you can see that this number here is always one less than the term, all right? And that's gonna be really important when we move on to the general term. But I just wanna introduce that concept first. All right, great. So now we know how to use combinations to work out the Pascal's triangle numbers without actually drawing out the triangle. And that saves us a lot of time and effort when we have something to a very high index.